There's a saying in Chinese called "chicken's rib," and it means that you know thin layer of protein on top of the rib bones, where it's just enough that you feel bad throwing it out completely. But at the same time, you know there's not much to work with. And for me, most of the ChatGPT and AI tools out there do kind of that. You know, they give you enough, so you're like, well, okay, like I, I could work with this. But at the same time, it doesn't give you so much that you want to, you know, invest your time and finding out, you know, what do all these tools do? And so I want to share with you today five non-chicken rib AI and ChatGPT tools. And prompts that has helped me save a lot of time and money. So let's go to the first: one. your own world-class coaching panel. I first got this idea from Dr. Jeremy Newen, who I was doing expert sessions with for Nick Milo's、uh, Light Workshops, and he shared this first as a way of finding out your core beliefs and try to challenge them. And for me, it was such a great idea. I wanted to adapt it to what I need, which is more coaching of drawing out what are my learnings and how can I apply them, and finding out the scientific studies that support them. So let me show you what it looks like on my laptop. So the coaching will happen in ChatGPT. As long as you have the free account, you can use this prompt. And let me show you what the prompt looks like. I'll have the links in the description as well. So it looks like this again is adapted from Dr. Jeremy Newen's version of a mentor panel prompt. And let me just walk you through what it is. It's quite long, which is good, so you don't have to write it out.、Um, but it will really help ChatGPT give you better answers. So first of all, we just tell ChatGPT, "Here's your role." You are a mentor panel of the world luminaries, who are chosen for their breadth of knowledge across areas. And here in the pink, you can choose the areas you are interested in. For me, I chose teaching and learning, career, health, and mental model thinking. Okay, and their job is to help draw out my learnings, help give me more perspectives, so that I can better apply them. Okay, and the panel is five step, so we list out the five steps later, so that we can have a dialogue with all of these people that we otherwise wouldn't have a chance to talk to. So for me on the panel, I chose、um, these four people. I chose Tina Seelig for teaching and learning from Stanford, the design school,、uh, and then in career I chose Naval. Health I chose、uh, Huberman, and mental model, th- model thinking I chose Charlie Munger. So again, they know their job, right? Help me distill my learnings, understand the science that supports or challenges those learnings, and clearly signpost where we are in the process. Okay. So then here's some mo-、uh, formatting details that I won't go through. Basically, just makes it、uh, consistent. Now, here are the five steps. First one is identified what I learned in the week. So already, it's asking me to think of the things that I've learned, and if I don't have anything in mind,、uh, the panel will ask me probing questions to help me draw out what is it that I learned. Okay, so here's some formatting, some steps. Then step two, the panel is then going to give me some scientific studies and perspectives that supplement or challenge what I'm learning. So here. You know, this is really powerful. That otherwise I wouldn't ha- be able to know. You know, what are the s- latest signs out there、uh, that either support what I'm finding out intuitively, or what are the things that I'm missing that I can't see? Right. So having this coaching panel is really amazing. Okay. Then、um, at the end, I'm going to get the moderator. To ask me which context am I thinking about applying these learnings? Right. So prompt me to think about how am I going to use these. So then once I tell them the context in step three. It's going to ask me how I envision applying those learnings, and it makes me think first. Then, based on that answer in step four, the panelists with the relevant information and experience will help me expand on the way I said I would apply these, and even share five ways、um, the scientific findings can be applied. So I'm basically brainstorming and having them as a sounding board for how am I going to apply this these learnings that I have had. Okay, and then. Number five, the last step is each panelist then provides some coaching. They're going to probe a little bit. Their goal is to help me reframe and really help me take some action. And of course, this way we can have a dialogue back and forth to really find out what is it I'm going to do next. I mean, it's pretty crazy that we can have a free coaching、uh, panel on ChatGPT. So let me just copy this over and show you what that looks like. All right. Uh, I'm gonna use ChatGPT four, but you don't have to.、Um, well, since I pay for it, I w- might as well use it. <laughs> okay, so I put the prompt in as is. Then it's going to start. 
Okay, the moderator says, let's start with step one. Could you share with us what you've learned in the past week? If you have documented some of these, would you share it with us? And let's say I say, oh, I don't have anything written down. Okay, then the moderator moves on to the next step, which is the panelists will ask me questions to uncover what's important in my life and what learnings I have gleaned from the past week. Okay, so Professor Selig says, could you share one thing that you found particularly challenging in this past week and how you dealt with it? Oh, interesting. Okay, so... So I wrote that I was at Stanford and one thing that was difficult was to speak up when multiple people were sharing their thoughts. Okay. Okay. Professor Selig then says, it's great that you're participating in the D school. I mean, she's a part of the D school or used to be, I think. And uh, she says, regarding speaking up in a group, can you share more about what held you back? Is it discomfort, fear of being wrong or perhaps something else? Okay. Already, you know, we're in this coaching conversation. All right. So I said, I find that because already there are so many ideas, it's hard to share another one and, you know, derail the conversation almost. Okay. So she says, it seems like your current challenge lies in the intersection of communication and idea generation. While you value the abundance of ideas, you also recognize the need for focus and direction. We'll be sure to address this in our discussion. Interesting. I never thought about it that way, but actually she is very right. Um, I'm always the one who loves to be creative, but also I want uh, to be on track. Okay, interesting. And Naval says, in the context of your career, have you made any notable observations and learned anything about yourself this past week? Okay, so now Naval is probing me on the specific instance when I realize that I'm good at confidence building. All right, so I said that during the teaching part of the boot camp, I saw that certain participants needed a confidence boost and was holding back from saying something because someone else who's very comfortable sharing uh, is taking up the time. Okay, let's see what Naval says. Okay, he's that's quite nice that he says that I'm attuned to the dynamics of the group. All right, you you get the point. So here is when you don't have something you want to discuss you can get the panel to draw it out for you. Now, let me show you that if you did have an, some learnings that you wanted to share, what this will look like. Okay, so let's paste in exactly the same prompt. And let's say I did have something to talk about already. Okay, so the moderator then summarizes my takeaway and would move on to... Okay, so is this right? Yes. Now, moderator is moving on to step two, which is getting the panelists to share some scientific studies and perspectives that either supplement my ideas or challenge them. Okay, so... All right, so the panel has come back, right? Tina Selig, she brought out Bandura's study on self-efficacy, also Duckworth and the idea of grit, okay? Then Naval brings up a growth mindset, okay? Uh, Huberman's talking about a strong positive correlation between self-confidence and the release of dopamine. Okay, that's interesting. Also, novel experiences of diverse group of people promote co cognitive flexibility. Interesting. Munger talks about inversion. Okay, so now I have all of these little nuggets that I can work with. All right, how do I want to expand on them? Do I want to expand on them? Uh, they're helping to start stretching my thinking. Right? I also talk about stretching my thinking here, but this is another version of it. All right, um, then they're asking me, so which context do I want to open? So I'm building a school. Um, I will let you know about this in detail in another one, uh, another video. But anyway, so I want to apply this to that context. And the moderator says, okay, great. Let's move on to step number three, which is give them some examples of how I envision applying these learnings in that context. So let me type it in. All right, so I already prepared this. Uh, I want to have classes that are designed towards building confidence, um, but I don't really have any good exercises, so I'm asking the panel if they have any ideas. Also, I want to add more elements of uncertainty into the learning experience, not just make it really fake, uh, but having uncertainty and being able for people to feel like they can not only deal with it, but also have this um, teamwork element where you're uncertain who's going to show up where, but you're going to be able to figure it out. And also incorporate more ways to learn with people around the world, having more diverse uh, experiences that we can't really do in real life most of the time. Let's see what the panel says. Okay, so now the panelists are going to offer their insight and suggest ways to implement my vision. Let's see what happens. 
All right. Uh, so let's say Tina Selig says. Okay, you can design exercises that emphasize the process over the product. Very interesting. So encouraging everyone to celebrate progress, no matter how small. And that's what I saw at the D school as well.、Uh, I think that's that's really really crucial.、Uh, and then second point about dealing with uncertainty, you might introduce design challenges or problem solving activities that have multiple valid solutions. That makes a lot of sense.、Um, I'm really yeah against this idea of one correct answer with things that are more. You know, realistic, pragmatic. So okay, I can do that. Then talking about the virtual first school, being able to embrace diversity, might also want to consider having guest speakers from different cultures. Yeah, okay,、uh, perfect. Then Deval says, failing fast to learn and improve quickly,、um, and incorporate that. Not sure what he means. I'll have to ask him in a moment. Let's say what Huberman says. Encouraging physical activities and mindfulness practice can significantly enhance mental health and learning. And Munger says to promote a culture of adaptability, encourage them to analyze problems from different perspectives, using various mental models. Absolutely, even in my、uh, framework thinking course, I mean that's the whole point. Right. Instead of seeing it as oh, this is such a robotic way of solving problems, it's actually very creative and adaptive. Okay, great. Can I think of any other ways? So in this way, we can also have a dialogue with these people, right? Asking them to expand, asking them to give you examples, asking them to clarify themselves, and so in this way, we can really have a dialogue with these people that we otherwise can't. Uh, which is really amazing. So this is the first use case of、uh, a GPT prompt that doesn't suck. All right, let's get back to the second one. The second thing is AI-powered meeting notes, meeting admin in general. I'm sure you felt it too. You know, before a meeting, you have to prepare. What's the agenda? What do I need to share during the meeting?、I、have to take notes on who's saying why. What are the next steps? You know, and then once you finish the meeting, you need to send recaps. You need to track who's doing what. Like when I'm running my course, when I'm running my school, which I will tell you at another time.、Um, it's really a lot of unnecessary work. You know, they say you spend 13 hours a week. Just focus on note taking and admin tasks. So I'm using AI for this,、um, and there are two tools I use. The first one is Read AI, which I started with, but it doesn't give great search functions. So now I'm switching to Lupin, and Lupin is the sponsor of this video. They have a free plan,、uh, which I think would be great to introduce. So let me show you what it looks like. This is what. An AI meeting note look like. This is of a real meeting. I had it with my team talking about the framework course that we're running, and、uh, it's generated by Lupin AI, who is also today's sponsor. Thank you so much for sponsoring us in this video. And、uh, let me show you three things that, that's really game changing for me. The first one, of course, is it takes meeting notes, not just transcripts, but it summarizes, and it summarizes in three buckets: so discussion topics. Action items and next steps. Who's doing what, and also other notes. That by itself already is very helpful. So we don't have to context switch and try to write down notes ourselves. But the next thing is it also captures notes from previous meetings, and this way it really helps us capture the context because we're always talking about what happened last time, what's the progress, what's the change, and so having them in all one place is really helpful. Which leads me to the next thing that's really great, which is that they have this beta feature called、uh, Lupin AI Beta, where you can chat with、uh, basically like ChatGPT before your meeting notes specifically. So I can ask it, for example, I asked it, "What are we doing for the emails to alumni?" And Lupin AI will look through the summary as well as the transcript and let me know what's happening with the emails to alumni. This is really amazing because one, if you miss the meeting or you miss some parts of the meeting and you just want to get an update on where we're at, it's super easy. And if you are in the meeting and you just want a quick update on, okay, so what did we decide on in the end?、Uh, that's also a really good tool. Tool, and of course you can get, you know, what. And Lupin AI is going to be able to extract parts of it that are relevant for me, which is awesome. 
And this way, as your meetings grow bigger, uh, you can search across different meetings. Uh, you can also filter here. So for this one, I filter specifically for uh, these team meetings. You can also do it for different use cases uh, so that you can get the right results. Now I'm going to share with you the third, fourth, and fifth thing. They're all plugins, new plugins on ChatGPT. So let me show you. Plugins are available if you get GPT Plus, so $20 a month. You'll have to decide whether that's worth it for you or not. For me, it really helps because it helps me do things that otherwise would take me way too long uh, to do or even hire others, which I don't want to do. And the plugins specifically I want to use are Science, Chat with PDF, and Show Me Diagrams. These three I've been using a lot. So let me show you what um, they look like. For example, uh, I'm always trying to incorporate the latest science into the things that I'm teaching, into the school that I'm building. And so uh, this time I have this decision-making PDF from Harvard. Let me just show you. And you know, it looks a little bit dense. I don't really want to read through it. I would like to have an idea of this before I dive into it specifically. So what I'm gonna do is get ChatGPT to explain it to me first. So I said, you're a decision scientist and a multidisciplinary educator, well-versed in frameworks and mental models. How would you summarize the PDF below and share with students what role does emotion make in decisions? And also I want to create a visual diagram to show how emotions and decision-making uh, are connected. Okay. Then ChatGPT will start to use the plugins uh, to figure things out. So it picks up that I want to read PDFs. So it's going to use chat with PDF to figure it out. Okay, so it's summarized and now it's creating a visual diagram uh, because I asked it to, and it's using show me diagrams, the plugin. So let's see what it comes up. With. Okay, here we go. Uh, that's show me. All right, so here's the diagram and that makes the whole PDF a lot more uh, visual and intuitive than before. Now I can see that what is the relationship between emotions and decision making? What's the connection between the results? Um, and it shows me that there's a difference between influencing and current emotions. So in this way, you know, already I haven't read the PDF yet. At least I can start to visualize in my mind, where does emotion even fit in in the decision making process? What are the things I have to pay attention to? It seems like there's an influencing part and a current emotions part. And then if I come back and I look at um, the summary, I can start to see what are the key ideas that I need to focus on. And so this is very, very powerful. Something that has really helped me break down things that I would otherwise procrastinate on uh, to be able to say, okay, just show me the summary and the diagram. And then also the other thing with science is, and here I, instead of me trying to search, find the right terms uh, on different scientific websites, I can just get ChatGPT to do the work. And here we go, we have uh, three papers that science has found. If we click on it, uh, it will show us the full text uh, and any paper that references it. This way is just an easy way to get started um, a brainstorming before searching the web. And if you're looking for more ways to make more time, check out this video here. And for all of those of you who are here, I got a new mic. So hopefully the audio is good in this one. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.